Marvellous. Uh, so here we go. This is uh, the, so I think, as I said, you know, uh, the, the spoiler for this whole thing is what we want uh, to get across is the idea that you should think differently about the data you can express in manifest and then equally the way you can express the manifest online. You all know what a manifest is. You all know what an annotation list is. The key thing is that we, uh, in this case, using manifest to describe individual images or, or series of images, and we're using the annotation list to describe regions of those images. So if we loaded up the sample manifest we created, uh, we looked at one with multiple images so here we've got some items from the Qatar digital library we later look at one with a, a single image um, from which is a, a Holbein portrait from the National Gallery and oh yes, sorry I'll just quickly pause say that they hopefully we'll get the live demo working at the bottom right of every slide there's a, a link there uh, to the a, a short URL that you can load up on your phone or laptop or whatever and we'll, we'll see if we can do the final demo together but basically, most of the time, people see the manifest through Mirador or Universal Viewer. Um, but what we want to do was say, okay, what would happen if we took all of the data in that manifest and effectively linearize it? We turn it into a story. So stories in their broadest form are linear narratives. So we took that and then looked at different ways in which that could be expressed. So here we've taken the manifest and instead of displaying it as as usual in a viewer, we've uh, spat it out as a web page. So uh, sort of everybody, you know, this was the simplest version we could think of. Everybody understands how to read a web page and see any images that accompany the text. Uh, then we thought, okay, what happens, you know, you do exactly the same, but instead of on a web page where you see this all at once, you, you set up a box that maybe sends one item from your manifest each day for uh, 30 days or something like that. And so we, again, we're using exactly the same information, but you can see already that the recipient of that information experiences it in a very different way. Uh, so then we thought we go to the opposite extreme, okay, how, uh, to create an interactive viewer to give uh, full control to the user. And here, I, again, very similar to, uh, the uh, Mirador Universal Viewer and, and the other Zoomable viewers online, we're using Open Sea Dragon. And, but the key thing here is we, we've got this idea of previous and next. You can move through the narrative and at the bottom there, the text displays uh, according to what's going on. But at the same time, if you want to take over control and zoom in and look at other areas of the painting, you can do that. You can do it at your own pace. Uh, so then we took uh, it, it, these exact same things that we developed and, and threw another um, manifest and annotation list at them. And in this case, we're looking at uh, the ambassadors. So in here, you see it and all of the regions we're looking at. But again, what we want to do was show those sequentially. So uh, here's exactly what we saw before. It's a, um, a linear web page. We're seeing some examples there of, of different types of annotations, so either one annotation, talk about multiple images, um which you can see there i think in the first bit that sort of we, we did load you know upload three different cropped images to twitter um equally annotations that talk about uh, different images that might be used for comparison uh, and so forward, uh, if we look at this version the interactive viewer again you can see here that it's a both controllers but use the previous and next, um, and then if you want to pan around yourselves, you can. I think there's a couple, like say, uh, yeah. So there, we on the right hand side, we're using a uh, we're, we're using an annotation that is an image itself. So the the text there describes the comparison or similarity of the two portraits. So there we'd show two. Here we've got one annotation that refers to three different regions. So in the viewer. Uh, this version, we highlight all three and let the user explore them and zoom into them themselves if they want to. In the blog or Twitter example, we would crop all three of those and just place them next to each other. So again, there's lots of possibilities. Um, and then finally, you, you'll notice on the, the painting, there's this large stretched skull. Uh, this was just a, a bit of an experiment and uh, you know something that when the, the 3D API is finalized, then 
we, we would expect to be able to be expressed in IIIF as well. But here is the idea image um, and we have to we rotate it around the z-axis to go uh, from the, the 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 smeared representation to the, the much more normal representation that with the physical painting you can only do by by standing at a very particular angle uh, so then we looked at sort of other things uh, that still follow the same narrative but um experiencing in a different way uh sorry I, I, let's see if this uh, video starts um, this was, so, so there's something in the, the art world, a sort of slow art movement, and the idea is that here you uh, experience paintings very close up and, and deliberately slowly. So, so in here, but sort of, it's a bit jerky, but in, in the real thing, um, well, actually in the real thing, we, we kept it quite fast to show what we were doing. What we're doing is, again, still reading from the annotation list, and we're, this time, instead of, zooming in and zooming out to the different areas of interest we're just doing a very very slow pan following the the annotations and when we get to a particular one we display the text but equally you could remove all of the text you could you could have this purely as a visual experience and the idea is that this should be much slower it should be immersive and contemplative instead of uh, the other styles of, of reading or, or um, that we've seen uh, then there's the speech synthesis. Uh, so here's one. I don't know whether. When this double portrait was painted, Jean de Dinteville, Seigneur de Polizzi, was ambassador to London from the court of the French king, Francois I. So here we can see we're just using the, the browser's text to speech API. Again, the same Hello, information. Bottom shelf. Mark Dinteville's chateau now, and Polizzi. So let me mute that. Uh, but the, the, the idea here is that. Is The idea is that the it, it, the story then becomes an entirely passive experience. So the user doesn't have to click on anything, interact with anything. It just loads up once it starts. They sit back and listen and watch. Um, so again, just the, the same idea, same manifest, but different way of experiencing it. And then. Finally, uh, we've got the idea of a human storyteller. So here we can try the live demo. So if everybody has uh, got that link up, um, let me just, I'll, I'll paste into the chat as well. Um, so this, that, that link there will effectively take you to the client version of this. Um, what I'm gonna do is load up the server version. And you can see this looks very similar to uh, the zoom ball viewer we saw already. But here, so if I click next here, uh, we zoom in to the face. And if everything's working, what you should find is that on your own devices, phones, laptops, etc., you're now uh, being zoomed into that face as well. And you've got, again, deliberately no control over that. You can't zoom or pan. I, you can't see any text. So the idea here is it, it's like a presenter mode. So I would be the storyteller. I would see the text down at the bottom and I would say when this double portrait was painted, then I'd, uh, when I finished that one, I'd move on and say oh, the globe on the bottom shelf marks uh, Dinterville Chateau at Policy and so on. So here we're taking exactly the same information from the manifest, but this time it, it's up to me as a presenter controlling all of uh, your devices and I can read from these notes, but I can also ad lib. If I decide to just talk more about uh, this guy's nose or whatever, um, and I can also just go and come itself. So here, what I'm doing on the control interface is dragging around. And what you should hopefully see is that on your computers, then whatever I am looking at is also replicated there. So. Again, it would depend on device aspect ratio and so on, but largely anything that's in the center of my screen should now be showing up on your screen. Um, and and that was that was it really. So um, there's only I think all that's left was there's a conclusion slide, slide that reiterates the central points of uh, thinking differently about manifests, so they don't just have to uh, be used for sort of the the normal purposes of literal information about a work. Um, most manifests are used to display the archival information or the, the same tombstone information that you might have for a museum object. 
um, is very much the metadata. What I'm saying is, well, think again, it can express any text at all. And so you can absolutely use this to, to drive um, you, you know, experiences that aim to engage your visitors a lot more. And then secondly, think differently about the way those manifests can be expressed. They, they don't have to just be the zoomable viewers with uh, hotspots or, or similar. Um, they can be everything from a, a Twitter bot through to this idea of just a, a, a tool for a human narrator to go and control people's devices that, that again may be in the same room or, or may be remote as well. I mean, with, uh, I'm, I'm doing the remote version right now, um, but equally you could imagine uh, you know, a, a museum or gallery handing out iPads to a bunch of school kids, them sitting there while a curator actually tells them the stories and they see up close uh, what they're, they're meant to be looking at. Uh, so yes, so that, that, that is it basically. Um, uh, thank you for listening. And does anyone have any questions? Uh, I